Hey, what's up motivators? Taryn here. If you're a beginner runner just getting into the sport, there are five critical things that you need to know to make sure that your running shoes are enhancing your run performance and not actually taking away from your run performance, slowing you down and increasing the likelihood of injury. Let's get into it. When regular people want to do something personally amazing in an endurance event, they use Motive Training Plans. Whether you're just getting started or you've done several events and want a little more structure to step up your game, we know what it takes to get amateurs to their goals no matter how big or small. You can accomplish anything you want. You just need a plan designed for the unique needs of people with families, jobs, and a busy life. The Motive Training Method is that plan to get you to the start line feeling confident and across the finish line feeling strong. The first thing you need to know to make sure that your shoes are enhancing your performance and not taking away from them is that you need to start off by getting the right shoes. We've scoured all of the publications out there and the best running shoes for beginner runners are a neutral shoe, not actually a motion control shoe or a stability shoe. They weigh roughly seven to 10 ounces and they have about a zero to six millimeter heel to toe drop. Why this is the shoe that allows beginner runners to run more freely with less likelihood of injury is because this type of shoe is what's going to allow your foot to move in its natural range of motion. Stability shoes, overpronation shoes, motion control shoes, heavy shoes, shoes with a big heel to toe drop, these are all factors that are going to cause your foot to move in a range of motion that it isn't ready to move in. It's not working within your natural biomechanics. There are many, many studies that all confirm the same general trend that the more structured a shoe is for a beginner runner, the poorer it's going to perform as it relates to preventing your likelihood of injury. The body needs to build strength for running in its natural range of motion, not in a range of motion that it doesn't want to actually move in. So get that neutral shoe, that seven to 10 ounce shoe, that zero to six millimeter heel to toe drop shoe, and this is going to be the shoe that will allow your body to adapt to running as quick as possible with as little likelihood of injury as possible. The second thing that you need to know to get the most out of your shoes is to get the right size. Now you might think that getting the right running shoe size is as simple as just going to the store and getting a pair of shoes that fit, and maybe you've had some help by one of the people that work at the store. There's actually one study that dove directly into what is the best running shoe size and how do people go about getting the running shoe size that works best for them over and over and over. One thing that they found is that you need to be sized for your shoes every single time that you buy a pair of shoes. And a rule of thumb is that you want shoes that there is a thumb width in between the end of your longest toe and the end of the shoe. But the trick to doing this is you wanna do it when your foot is actually swollen. So you can do it immediately after a run or towards the end of a day when you've been on your feet all day. This is going to make sure that your foot has room to expand throughout the duration of a workout because our foot grows and swells throughout a workout and we wanna make sure that our foot has room to do so. Second, size the heel correctly, then make sure that your forefoot has room and the shoe matches your foot shape. Don't go with a larger shoe if the forefoot doesn't fit. Make sure that the heel fits and then adjust the size of the shoe based on width. And finally, size your feet individually if necessary. The third thing that you need to do to make sure that your shoes aren't causing problems for you is you need to tie the laces correctly. What happens with a lot of people when they start getting into running is they tie the laces up really snugly. They wanna feel nicely locked in. Or maybe they've purchased a really roomy shoe and then decided that the way that they're going to make it fit is by tying the laces really tightly. Well, tying the laces over the top of your foot very tightly is going to increase the likelihood that you're going to have pain at the top of your foot. Instead, how you want the running laces on your shoes to fit is to be very, very loose all across the top of your foot and then only be snug basically at the very last loop of the shoes. This is gonna make sure that your heel is locked in while your forefoot is able to move very freely. 
It doesn't really matter what knot you use, you can use a traditional knot or you can use a runner's knot. There will be a link to the runner's knot up in the top right corner of this video if you wanna take a look at how to do that. But the idea is to lock in everything at the heel and allow your forefoot to move with as much freedom as possible. The fourth thing you need to do to make sure your shoes aren't contributing to a higher likelihood of injury is to rotate shoes in and out. It takes about 24 to 48 hours for a shoe to completely recover from every single run that you do. Within this time, the foam of the shoes isn't ready to respond to another run. So going out and running on the same pair of shoes day in and day out or within two days of each other is going to lead to a higher likelihood of injury because the shoes just don't have as much cushion as they're meant to have. Now this comes with a caveat. This doesn't mean that you should bounce from one pair of shoes to another, to another, to another all the time. You want to stay roughly within a set of shoes that you know work well for you. If you're constantly changing from one type of shoe to another, that's actually a higher likelihood of injury. But if you have two or maybe three pairs of shoes that you use for months or years on end, maybe they're similar models or very similar builds, these are shoes that your body is going to be adapted to and staying within the same types of shoes is going to make sure that your body is always running on a pair of shoes that it knows how to run really well in. But that does mean that you need several pairs of shoes so that every other day you can switch out from one pair to another. A really good way to do this is to just run on different terrains. So every other day maybe you're changing from road running or track running to trail running and having a trail pair of shoes that you know works well for your feet and a track pair of shoes that you know works well for your feet. And this is going to make sure that you're always running on a fresh pair of shoes that is ready to respond and absorb the pounding of training. The fifth and final thing that you need to do to make sure that your shoes aren't contributing to a higher likelihood of injury is to retire your shoes but not at some arbitrary mark like 200 miles or 300 miles. Different people run with different foot strikes that places a different load on the shoes, causing each pair of shoes to last a different period of time. Some people need a lot of cushions, some people don't need a lot of cushion. Some shoes are meant to last 500 miles while others are meant to last 100 miles. Don't use some arbitrary mark that the running shoe industry or some coach or even a friend has told you about how long you should go in between changing out shoes. The time at which you should retire a pair of shoes is as soon as your lower leg starts feeling sore. So if the bottom of your feet, the ankles, your heel, your calves start feeling more beat up than usual, but you haven't changed anything in your training very drastically and you're very well rested, well, this is an indication that your shoes just aren't keeping up to the task and it's time to change them out. For some people, this is 100 miles. For other people, it's 400 miles, but it's different for everyone. Thank you for watching Motivator. Hopefully you found this video helpful and if you did you would probably like this video that we have up on the screen right now that is our complete beginner's guide to getting started running that talks about gear training and how to prepare to reach all of your goals later motivators